Hey everyone, Jason here. Today I'm going to show you how you can modify the official Wally -E set using the PFX brick to add light, sound, and motion to the model. I'm going to start by going over all of the components you need and then I will walk you through the changes that need to be made. In order to do this modification you will need the following electronics components. One PFX brick, any flavor will do except for the PFX light which has no motor or audio capabilities. An M speaker brick for the audio playback. Three white LEDs and you can use any brand of LEDs you want as long as you have the corresponding light accessory board to connect them to the PFX brick. In this case I am using FX brick LEDs along with the PinLab light accessory board. The two LEDs for the eye should be at least 150 millimeters long and in this case I'm using two 256 millimeter LEDs and the LED for the light at the front of the control panel should be at least 128 millimeters long. You will also need one power functions battery box, either the AAA battery box or the rechargeable battery box will work. One power functions extension cable to connect the PFX brick to the battery box. One power functions IR remote or a smartphone with the PFX app on it to control the PFX brick. And two power functions M motors to drive the tracks. In addition to the electronic components, you will also need the following Lego pieces. Three dark gray one by one regular bricks. One dark gray headlight brick. Four dark gray one by one bricks with a single stud on one side four one by one black plates, one one by four dark gray plate, three one by one plates with a hole in the middle in black, two two by two plates with a rounded underside, also commonly known as boat studs, two four long Technic axles in black, and two black Technic friction pins. Now we are ready to build our Wally, -E. and the way I'm going to do this is by going through the instruction manual and noting all of the changes that need to be made. I'm only going to make note of the steps that do require modifications, and you can just follow all of the other steps normally. If you've already built your Wally, -E, you will have to disassemble portions of it to make these changes, which I will leave up to you. The first changes that need to be made are in step number 11, and here we are just not going to add the center of the three inverted slopes. In step 12, we aren't going to add any of the suggested pieces. Instead, we're going to add two 1x6 orange tiles across the hinge plates, like so. In step 13, we are going to add all of the pieces except for this 1x4 orange brick. And instead, we're going to add two 1x1 dark gray bricks. In step 17, we aren't going to add the two 1x8 black plates. Instead, we are going to take four 1x1 black plates and we're going to stack two on top of each other and attach them at one end of where the 1x8 black plates would have gone. And we're going to stack the other two and put them at the other end of where the 1x8 plates would have been. In step number 18, we are just going to leave out the 1x2x3 black panel. In step number 22, we are going to leave out the two 1x6 plates and 1x6 tile. And instead, we are going to add two 1x2 tiles. In step number 26, instead of adding the suggested pieces, we are going to add one 1x6 orange plate where they would have gone. In step number 31, we aren't going to add the 1x4 brick with studs on the side. Instead, we're going to add two dark gray 1x1 bricks with studs on their side. And in between them, we're going to add a 2x3 plate, a 1x2 plate, and another 1x2 plate. In step number 33, we are going to leave out the two 1x2x2 light gray panels. And in step number 34, we are not going to add the two 
two by two light gray plates. Instead, we're going to add these one by two bricks with click hinges on them directly to that two by three yellowish orange plate. In step number 43-2, instead of adding the one by six plate, we're going to add a one by four dark gray plate here and a regular one by one black round plate here, leaving a one stud gap between them. And in step 43-4, instead of adding the one by four brick with studs on the side, we are going to add a one by one brick with studs on the side, a regular one by one brick, another one by one brick with studs on the side, and then we are going to take a one by one dark gray headlight brick and we are going to feed the 128 millimeter LED through the back of it so that it just comes out through the front. And you can use a set of tweezers if you want to gently push the LED a little further through because we are going to put a one by one black round plate with a hole in it on top of that front of that LED and then we are going to put that right there and now behind that we are going to add another one by one black plate this time just a regular one without the hole in it in that gap we left in step 43 dash two, whoops, and let me just replace those one by one round plates that popped off. And this way the wire can feed through the two one by one round plates right there. And we're going to add that assembly where it normally would go. When we add the one by eight tiles in step number 44, we're going to keep the wire on the outside of this one. In step number 46, we will do everything except for adding this one by two tile. That is where we will eventually attach the M speaker. In step 50, we are going to do everything except add the one by one plate and the one by one plate with clips on it. Instead, we're gonna leave that gap to feed the LED wire through. As well, we're going to add our M speaker here now. We can just sit it on those studs on the inside where that tile we omitted was and we are also going to feed that wire through that gap there. And in step 51 we can now cover up that gap with the wires feeding through with this 2x4 tile. Step number 54 we are going to skip entirely as this is where we will eventually add the PFX brick and we are also going to completely skip step number 56 for the same reason. We are also going to skip adding the 4x4 plate in step number 65 because we're going to need all the space we can get in the interior of the body for the battery box. In step number 66 we are going to build the right side of the control panel as per the instructions but for the left side of the control panel instead of using the 2x3 plate we're going to get a 2x2 plate and put the two grill tiles on it and we'll mount that where it would normally go. And underneath that, the one by one dark gray tile, we're going to put on a one by one light gray plate and put it where it normally went. And the one by one transparent red round plate, we're going to just put on top of that LED we added earlier. In the first part of step 75, instead of adding the three long axle with a stud on the end, we are going to add a black friction pin in the second stud hole. Then we're going to add a power functions M motor upside down so that the drive axle is in line with the first stud hole of that lift arm. And then we're going to add a four long axle into that stud hole to engage the motor. And the rest of step 75 is built as per normal. 
In step number 79, before adding the track to the body, we are going to add a 2x6 dark gray plate to the bottom of the M motor so that half of it is attached to this M motor. The other half will be attached to the other M motor once we attach the other track. And this track will connect to the body as per the instructions. And just like we did for the other track, in step number 86, instead of adding the three long axle with the stud on the end, we are going to add a black friction pin at the second stud hole. Then we're going to add the power functions and motor upside down. And then we are going to add a four long black axle into the motor drive shaft. And in step 90, when we add this track assembly to the body, we are going to connect the bottom of the M motor to that two by six plate that's attached to the other M motor as well. At this point, we can add most of the electronics. And to do that and run all the wires, first, we're actually gonna take off the door panel just to make it a little bit easier then we're going to take off the two by two curved slopes on either side of it again just to make it a little easier to run the wires the motor cables are going to come up underneath and they're going to slide into this gap behind the black friction pin here and then we're gonna feed the power function connector end all the way through the body so that it comes out that gap we left on the back side. And we're going to do the exact same thing with the other end motor, except we're gonna run it through the other side, through that gap. The connector goes through the body and then out the back. Now we're going to get the power functions battery box and the extension cable. And we're gonna connect the extension cable to the battery box. Whoops, wrong connector. And then we're going to run the other end through that same hole in the back. Then we're going to attach the bottom of that connector to the one by four brick with studs on the side and we can put the pfx brick right on top of that so that it draws power from that we'll push it in so it's nice and snug then we can connect the two motor connectors and we can connect the m speaker to the speaker output port and we can also add the light accessory board to connect all the LEDs. And we will attach the control panel LED to channel three. Now, if we go back around to the front, we could fold the power functions extension cable over onto itself. And then we can slide the battery box in sideways into the body. And it should fit in nice and snug. Then we can add our two by two curved slopes back onto the sides of the front. We can add our door panel back on and it should be able to close nice and snugly. And then to turn the battery box on, you can just pull it out, turn the power on and put it back in. The next changes will be for adding the LEDs into the eyes and at step 121, instead of having the dark gray headlight brick and the one by one plate, we're actually going to not use the one by one plate. For the headlight brick, we're going to thread one of the LEDs through the front of it. And we're actually gonna push it all the way through. And then we are going to connect that headlight brick to the assembly like so. 
the rest of the eye assembly is constructed as per the instructions until we get to step 130. At this point, we're going to thread that LED through the back of the 3x3 radar dish. And instead of a regular 1x1 black plate, we're going to use one of the 1x1 black plates with a hole in it. And we're going to stick the LED through the top of that hole, just so that it sits in there nicely. Then we can connect that black 1x1 plate to the inside of the radar dish. And instead of the black 2x2 boat stud, we're going to use the transparent clear ones to put on top. That way we can see the LED. And then we can connect that radar dish to that headlight brick as we normally would. When we connect that light assembly to the neck, there's plenty of space to run the LED wire. And we can just dress it out to the back like so. And just like we did for the other eye assembly, when we get to step 144, we aren't going to use the 1x1 one one light gray plate. We'll thread the last LED through the front of that headlight brick, all the way through. And then we will connect that headlight brick to the assembly, like so. And again, no other changes need to be made until we get to step 153, where again, we will thread the LED through the 3x3 radar dish from behind. Then we'll use the black 1x1 round plate with a hole in it. And put the LED so that it sits snugly there. And we'll connect that black plate to the inside of the 3x3 radar dish and put the transparent boat stud on the top. And then we will connect the 3x3 radar dish into the headlight brick as per usual. And again, there's plenty of space to run the wire as we connect the other eye assembly to the neck. Then we'll connect the hoses as per normal. Then we can actually wrap the wires around the neck a little bit so that they don't just hang all loose. And we can actually feed them through that same channel the other LEDs run through. Actually, we'll connect them to channels one and two first. And we can run them through that gap and put the two by four tile back on. And if you really want, you can also add another plate to the back of the neck to keep the wires fixed. There should be one extra one by or two by two gray plate that you can use for that. And that'll keep the wires running through the neck, no matter how you pose it. And that is all there is to it. The rest of the construction remains the same for the arms. In order to configure the PFX brick, you can download the profile from the resources section of fxbricks.com and you can use the desktop application on Windows or Mac to import that configuration file onto the PFX brick. You can of course customize that configuration however you like, but by default, channel one will control startup and shutdown actions. Channel two will control the lighting Channel 3 will control audio playback. And channel 4 will control the motors. And that is about all there is to it. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment or contact us over at fxbricks.com. Thanks for watching.